So today, we're using trigonometry to find unknown angle measures in right triangles. And it's very similar to finding unknown side lengths in right triangles using trigonometry, but there's a little trick to it. So let's do this. In this first triangle here, we're trying to find this angle measure. And we are given the hypotenuse, and we're given one of the legs. And notice, based on the position of this angle, this is the opposite leg. So since we're working with the opposite leg and the hypotenuse, we're going to be using sine in this case. All right, so the sine of angle x is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. All right, now, here's the thing. We can use our calculator to figure this answer out, all right? We're trying to find the sine of some angle that equals 20 divided by 37. Now, you could just guess and check over and over again to find what the angle measure of x is, but there's actually a faster way. You see, your calculator already knows all of the angles that sine is equal to. So it has a function in there that can calculate this, all right? And the function is called inverse sine. And what it amounts to is, what we're basically doing here is trying to undo the algebra equation to solve for x, just like any algebra equation. And we know the opposite of adding is subtracting, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. It turns out the opposite of taking the sine of an angle is taking the inverse sine of the angle. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And it's a little messy, but that's what we're doing to both sides. We're taking the inverse sine of both sides of your equation. Now, when you take the inverse sine of sine, they undo each other, and you're going to get x. On the other side, we're going to take the inverse sine of whatever 20 divided by 37 is. All right. Now, on my calculator, the inverse sine is right above sine. So I go second sine. And notice, I've got sine to the negative 1 power. That doesn't mean an actual exponent. What it is is symbolic of inverse sine. It's we're undoing sine. Okay, So I'm going to take the inverse sine of 20 divided by 37. And my calculator can take that whole thing in just like that. All right. When I hit Enter, now I know what that angle is. It's about 32.72 degrees. All right, and that's my answer. That angle there is about 32.72 degrees. And if you're, if you're not sure, you don't believe me, well, you can always just test it out. Sine of 32.72 degrees is 0 0.5405. Well, is 20 divided by 37 0.5405? Yes, it is. All right, so anytime you need to undo a trig ratio like sine, cosine, and tangent, we're going to use that inverse version of it. Okay, let's do one more so you can see it again. All right, we've got another triangle down here. Okay, notice here's my angle we're trying to find. We're working with the two legs, not the hypotenuse this time. This is the opposite leg, this is the adjacent leg. So we're going to be using tangent. Okay, so the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. All right, now, how do we figure this out? Well, just like last time, since we need to get x, we need to undo tangent. So we're going to do the inverse tangent over here. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. All right, so let's see what happens. Inverse tangent of tangent undoes it, and I'm left with just x over here. On the other side, I'm going to need my calculator. The inverse tangent of 39 divided by 35. There it is. It turns out to be about 48.09 degrees. And that's my angle measure right there. All right. So the key to this is anytime you're trying to find the missing angle using trigonometry, we're going to have to undo the trig ratio in order to figure out what x is, that angle. And that's what the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent are all about.
Alright, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe, it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.